distinguishes an attack on reduced round AES. And the author is Lorenzo Grazzi, and he will give a talk. Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Uh, I would like to start this, in, this uh, presentation about uh, mixed differential cryptanalysis with uh, which motivation about this work. So at Eurypt, uh, two years ago, we proposed the first uh, secret key distinguisher for five, five rounds of AES, which is uh, based on the multiple of eight property and is independent of the secret key of the details of the mixed column matrix and of the details of the S-box. However, we didn't propose any attack on that paper, and it was not clear at all if it is possible to exploit this property in order to set up a key recovery attack on six or even more round of AES. So as I'm going to show, it seems quite hard to exploit this distinguisher for a key, reco for a key recovery attack. However, we can, pose a uh, we can pose us a different question. So can we reformulate this property in a different way such that, such that we can exploit this observation in order to set up a key recovery attack? And the answer to this question is yes, and the possible answer is a mix of differential cryptanalysis that I'm going to present. So the presentation is organized in the following way. So just one slide about a yes, I guess everyone knows uh, it. And then uh, I briefly recall the multiple of eight property. The main part of this presentation is about the uh, mix of differential distinguisher, uh, why it works, uh, a proof of this distinguisher. In the fourth part, I'm going to show how to exploit this, this distinguisher to set up a key recovery attack, and I will conclude with some concluding remarks. So what about AES? Well, AES is based on the SPN construction. It works on uh, uh, text of 16 bytes, which are organized in a four times four matrix. The key size can be of 16, 24, or 32 bytes, and the number of rounds is 10, 12, or 14. Uh, the round is composed of three steps. We have uh, an S-box layer, so it's, now, it's uh, the only no linear operation in this round. It works independently in each byte. And then we have two linear operations, the shift rows, which works independently in each row, and a mixed column, which works independently in each columns. So what about the multiple of eight property? So let's consider five rounds of a yes without the, the final mixed column operation. So if, if uh, the final mixed column operation is not omitted, we can just swap it with the final key addition. So it's a inner operation, we can always do that. And then we take a set of two the 32 shows and paintings with one active diagonal. So this means that the texts are uh, equal in the second, in the fourth, and in the fourth diagonals, and they differ in the first one. And we consider the corresponding ciphertext after five rounds. And we can prove that the number of different pair of ciphertexts, uh, which are equal in one fixed anti-diagonal, is always a multiple of eight, with probability one. And this is independent of the secret key, of the details of the S-box, and of the details of the mixed column matrix. Actually, we have a much stronger result, so we can start with uh, more than a single active diagonal, so we can also have uh, two or three active di diagonals in input, and we can also consider the difference in more than a single in, uh, output anti-diagonal in output. Uh, we think that to collect and to formally describe all this result, it could be useful to use the subspace tree notation. So this means to consider printex in the same closet of a diagonal subspace, and to uh, count the number of different pair of ciphertexts uh, which belong to the same closet of, a, uh, of another subspace M. So here the index I and J uh, denote the size of this subspace. So what happens now if we try to extend this distinguisher into a key, into a key recovery attack? For example, we can consider six rounds of a yes, we can have plain text in the same closet of T, and the corresponding ciphertext after six rounds. Well, potentially we can guess the final key, we can just partially decrypt, and check if the multiple of eight property would or not. If not, then the guess key is wrong and we can filter wrong keys. However, we have a problem, and the problem is that uh, if we partially decrypt, uh, in order to check this property, we have to guess the entire key, because this property involves the full state. So that's, uh, that is not a problem for AS 192 or 256, because, I mean, we can, this attack is still, uh, uh, more competitive than brute force, but I mean, it's not so competitive. But obviously, it's a problem for AES 128 because that's brute force attack. So, uh, what can we do with this multiple of eight property? So, is there a way to reformulate this property in a different way such that we can exploit it to set up a key cover attack? The answer is yes, and it's based on the way in which this multiple of uh, eight property holds. So the idea is quite simple. We have a pair of plaintext P1 and P2, 
and we consider the corresponding ciphertext after five rounds. So assume that they belong to this space M or assume that they are equal in some anti-diagonal. So we know that there exists other pair of texts, Q1 and Q2, such that the corresponding ciphertext have the same property. But the crucial point here is that uh, the pair P1 and P2 and the pair Q1 and Q2 are not independent, in the sense that the generating variable of P1 and P2 are in some way related to the generating variable of Q1 and Q2. So what is the idea? Instead of limiting ourselves to count the number of collisions and to check that this is a multiple of eight, we can actually check if the relation between these variables uh, holds or not. So basically we are going to exploit a much stronger property, but on the other, uh, on the other hand, uh, we can uh, use this distinguisher in order to set up a key recovery attack. Just a spoiler, so this distinguisher works only on a smaller number of rounds, so we can set up it up to four rounds of AS. So in more details, let's consider two plaintext, P1 and P2, in the same closet of a column space C0. So this means that the two plaintext differs only in, in the first column. And uh, let's say that X, Y, Z, and W are the generating variable of P1 and of P2. And for the moment, we also assume that the generating variable of are different. So X1 is different from X2, and so on. So the idea is the following. So given P1 and P2 as before, we can prove that the corresponding ciphertexts after four rounds are in the same closet of M, or if you want, are equal in some anti-diagonal, if and if there exists other pair of plaintext for which the corresponding ciphertexts have the same property. So they also belong in the same closet of M. But the crucial point here is that we know how to, we know these plaintext, and uh, these plaintext are simply given by swapping the generating variable of P1 and P2. For example, in the first one, we swap the first uh, variable, in the second one, the second, and so on. So we are going to mix in the variables. Uh, we are using a property which uh, involves uh, differences. So here the name mix of differential cryptanalysis. So what happens if uh, one variable is equal for P1 and P2? Then we can repeat the same uh, strategy as before, but now we can simply replace W with omega, where omega can take any possible value. So we can uh, swap, we can mix the variables which are different, and we can replace the variable which is equal with any possible value. And again, if two variables are equal for P1 and P2. Now, why does this property hold? So the proof of this property is quite close to the one that we gave at Yurkip uh, two years ago. But in the following, I'm going to use the super as book not notation. So first of all, we have a property on four round. And uh, we want to reduce this property on two round of a yes. To do this, we use uh, a truncated differential uh, for two round of a yes, which holds with probability one. So the idea is that if two texts are in the same closet of T, then after two rounds, they are in the same closet of M with probability one. So for the following, it's not important to know the details of this space. Just believe me that uh, if we have this property on four rounds, we can just work on the first two rounds by replacing M with T. You can find all the details in the paper. So given P1 and P2, I'm going to prove the following. So if uh, the corresponding ciphertexts after two rounds are in the same closet of T, or if you want to equal in some diagonal, then there are other pair of plaintext uh, for which the corresponding ciphertexts after two rounds have the same property. And these pair of plaintext are generated as before. Now, what is the idea? It is very simple. So if we uh, consider the plaintext as before, and we prove that this equality, this equality, this equality holds, then the previous result follows immediately. This is very easy to check. So assume that these two ciphertexts are in the same closet of T, then if this equality holds, then also these two ciphertexts are in the same closet of T. So very easy. We have just to check that, the, we have just to verify this equality. And to do this, we exploit the super S-box notation, which was uh, introduced by the de designers of AES. Uh, it's defined as a S-box uh, concatenated with the mix column, the key addition, and uh, the S-box again. So the S-box works independently on each byte. The super S-box works independently on each column. It's still a linear operation, obviously, but it works independently on each column. And two rounds of a yes can be rewritten in this way. So we have the shift rows, then the super S-box, and then some linear stuff. So simple computation. We have this equality. We can just rewrite this in this way using the super S-box notation, where uh, um, here the print text big P1 are defined in this way. So we apply the shift rows to the previous plaintext. 
So what happens if we apply the shift rules? Well, remember P1 and P2 are uh, two texts in a column space, so the variables are in the, in the first column. But now, if you apply the shift rules, the variables are mapped into different columns. So each one of these columns depends on a different and independent variable. So that is very easy. So each column of these texts depends on different and independent variables. The super S box works independently on in each column. The XOR sum is commutative. So if we take this sum and we just swap, uh, we just mix the column of P1 and P2, for example, like in this case, then the, the quality doesn't change. And so the result follows immediately. For example, in, in this case, if uh, W is equal for at P1 and at P2, then the sum is zero, and so uh, we can understand that this sum is independent of the value of W. Okay, so we have this property. How can we set up a distinguisher on four rounds of a yes? Well, consider P1 and P2 as before, and assume that the corresponding ciphertexts are in the same closet of M. So they are equal in four minus J anti-diagonals. Now we can generate other pair of printings by just mixing, swapping the generating variable of P1 and P2. And we know that for four rounds of a yes, the corresponding ciphertexts are in the same closet of M with probability one. For a random permutation, the same event happens with much smaller probability. And this is independent of the secret key, of the details of the S box, and of the mixed column matrix. So we can easily distinguish the two cases. Just to have a comparison, uh, we have other distinguisher on four rounds of a yes. So the one that I just proposed requires to the 17 chosen print text or ciphertext. It can also be set up in the decryption direction. The cost is approximately of to the 17 encryption. So if you compare to the impossible differential, then the data cost is a little uh, smaller, but the complexity is much higher. And if you compare to the integral distinguisher, then the, the data cost is much higher, but the complexity, I mean, depends on the cost of XOR operation, can be uh, smaller. And just for, uh, just for completeness, there is also another distinguisher which was proposed uh, two years ago, the Yoyo distinguisher, which requires just four chosen plain text and four adaptive chosen ciphertext. Okay, so we have a distinguisher. Now let's try to set up a key cover attack on five rounds of a yes. That is very simple. Uh, just try to extend the distinguisher by one round at the beginning. So we start with pair of print text of this form, so with one active diagonal, and we simply compute one round uh, of encryption. So we have, after one round, text like this, so potentially we can repeat the same distinguisher as before, but the problem now is that this generating variable depends on the secret key. So we cannot work anymore independent of the, independent of the secret key, but we can exploit this, inf uh, this property to set up a key attack. So that is very easy. Uh, we just cast the key in the first round, and then we use the distinguisher on the next four round to fit the wrong keys. Where we, uh, we remember that the mix of differential property holds only for the secret key, so we can exploit this information. So in more details, uh, let's consider two to the 32 shows in paint text with one active diagonal, and uh, let's find a pair of paint text, P and P prime, such that the corresponding ciphertexts after five rounds are in the same closet of M, which you want are equal in four minus J anti-diagonals. So the idea is to guess part of the key, for example, the first diagonal, uh, to partially encrypt P and P prime with respect to the guess key, to swap the generating variable of P and P prime, so we generate new text, Q and Q prime, then we partially decrypt with respect to the guess key, and then we ask for the corresponding ciphertext after five rounds with respect to the secret key. Now, we know that uh, if the guess key is equal to the secret key, then we know that these two ciphertexts are in the same closet of M. So if this is not the case, then we can just filter wrong keys. So we know that the guess key is wrong. And the point here is that when we encrypt, or when we decrypt uh, using a wrong guess key, basically we generate random text, so there is no relation between this Q, prime, Q, Q and Q prime and uh, these two texts, and so we cannot expect that the mixed differential property holds. So what about this attack? So um, if you set up this attack in this trivial way, so this is what I did, uh, the cost is approximately of three times two to the 32 shows in plain text, and basically the same amount of uh, computation. At crypto 2018, so last year, Baron, Dukeman, Keller, and Adi Shamir, I hope I didn't forget anyone, proposed an, uh, 
an improved version of this attack, which requires just to the, to the 22.25 chosen paintings and basically the same amount of encryption. And as you can observe, this attack is one of the best one among all the attack on five rounds of AES, and the data is still competitive. Moreover, they also propose a way to extend this attack on seven round AES 192, and they propose uh, attacks with practical amount of data and memory. That's very nice. So, to conclude this talk, we started with the multiple of eight property, and we found a way to translate it into a more, into a simpler and more convenient distinguisher that can be exploited in, uh, to set up a click away attacks. Obviously, the work is not finished. Um, there are many, many open problems. For example, what happens if we apply this uh, distinguisher on tweakable AES like Cypher? So uh, can we exploit the freedom of the tweak or can we work in the related tweak mode in order to break more rounds? What about AES PRF or fork AES? So is this attack works also against this scheme? Other problems, uh, what about uh, if we try to extend this distinguisher? So for example, wh what happens if we try to combine this distinguisher with a boomerang attack? Or what about uh, an impossible mix of differentials? So until now we exploit property which holds with probability one, but potentially we can also work with property which holds with probability zero. I started to look into this direction. You can find some results on this uh, e-print paper, but at the moment they are not competitive at all, so get ready to work on this topic. And I also would like to conclude with uh, this message. So I would like to send a positive message to the community. And the positive message is just keep an open mind. So when we proposed the multiple of eight property, actually we didn't know any possible application of this distinguisher. So we didn't know if it, if it was just of theoretical interest or if it was possible to uh, set up any practical application. So any key recovery attack of this distinguisher. But now, the situation is completely different. So after just two years, we saw that this theoretical property can also lead to practical attacks. So we have new distinguisher, new attacks, which are the one that I just proposed, and the one that were proposed at crypto last year. We have new direction of research. So for example, the next talk is still about this topic. And we have also some unpublished result. So the message that I would like to send is the following. So it's very important to work with known techniques it's very important to try to break uh, Cypher using known techniques, but I think it's also important to try to consider uh, completing new idea, completing new idea of cryptanalysis. It's true that at the, uh, at the beginning, maybe they are not competitive at, as other techniques in the literature, but maybe after a few years, they can lead to very strong results. So just keep an open mind. That's all from my side. Any comment or question? So we have plenty of time for questions. <clears throat> Nobody in the audience? Okay, I just have a, a small question. I think your technique looks very similar to the yo-yo attack that we saw in the previous slide. Yeah. Can you comment a little bit on that? How is it different and similar? So they are very similar because we swap uh, columns or vital. Yeah. The difference is that we don't need uh, adaptive, adaptive chosen ciphertext or adaptive mm -hmm. chosen paint text. In a yo-yo game, you have to work with uh, adaptive shows and side text. Yeah, so that's okay. the advantage. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Other questions in the audience? No, still no. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. Thank you.